Event 1. Tauli, who is pretty tight with Blizzard developers, says this. I mean, I could I, I could tell you that 10.0 is going to be different. 10.0 is going to be very, very, very different. That's all I can say. It's going to be different. And then he keeps on saying, oh, it'll be different. And we kind of think, well, no shit. It'll have to be different if WoW's going to be moving in the right direction and we'll be doing well. But it's all cool to hear it'll be different from Tauli. But we then think, what does that mean? How is it different? What is a new direction? What does that look like? Because so many have so little faith in the game right now. And I do get that entirely. I mean, frankly, I too am a bit pissed that multiple expansions in a row, beta feedback that would have humongously aided the game has not been acted on, or in this case, as 915 has been acted on almost a calendar year late. Well, to allay people's fears, and to actually have people believe that when Tauli says 10.0 will be different, that it actually will be, two things are needed. Words and action. Action will come in the form of patch 9.2. Or so I thought when I first started this video. Because now it's time to talk about Event 2 and Event 3. Event 2! Some words. Ian has a coastus game director has provided an interview to VentureBeat, and it's decently major. Then, event three. This one is action. The WoW team have launched an initiative called the Community Council. Objectively, all of these things are good. So let's dive into what Ian had to say, what that can mean, and the Community Council. Oh, and if you're tired of parts of the current lore direction, as I am, well... I do actually have good news for you. Starting a successful side hustle on Skillshare, today's sponsor, where the first thousand of you to get my link, or click my link, will of course get a free month, is awesome. And when it comes to cosmic levels of productivity, Ali Abdal, Ali by the way, sub to this channel, hello, uh, he is the man on productivity. And this new class focuses on, I mean, how I started this channel, how most people who start that cool thing they do actually did that. Ali is all about doing this in a sustainable way alongside whatever you are doing, so a true side hustle. For the longest time, he even ran his channel while being a junior doctor in the NHS. Which sounds bloody hard work to me, but he certainly did it. In this space, few people are as credible as him. It's a super tight, well-executed class that you will get a lot out of, so do give it a shot for free at my link. Skillshare has thousands more courses, more from Ali, also the likes of NKBHD, Mountains of fantastic stuff, and the first thousand of you to follow my link will get a month free. So thank you to them for helping our team, being a great partner for the channel, and let's go. Feedback and action taken. That's really what we care about, and on the topic of feedback, what Ian had to say was good. I'd usually be skeptical, but there does seem to be a little bit of action backing this one up. So, he acknowledged that they can always do a better job at listening to feedback. That is what we call a big true. Also, communicating that they have heard feedback and communicating what they're actually doing with the feedback they've got. And he also did say that yes, much of the feedback that is being acted on did originate in beta. Now, seeing those things be spoken about officially is a good thing. Ian saying that we are acting on feedback now, 9.1.5, that was given by players in beta, that is good. These things have to be acknowledged. They have to be acknowledged because if those issues happen again, then we get to say, well, you acknowledged it back there. Why is it still a problem now? Conduit Energy. Ian called out Conduit Energy as something they were incorrect about, that they were wrong about. He said the team wanted it to feel like WoW Classic respec costs, but that it ended up just chafing on players, really, and that they should have changed it sooner. That absolutely is the case. That is what we want to hear. However, it does get a little bit more complex with the next set of things Ian said. So Ian says that 9.1.5 reflects them changing underlying philosophies that have motivated WoW's design for a long time. It does get tricky, and we have to be real about this, when he characterizes the decisions made as, and I quote, outgrowths of lessons that were taught to us by our predecessors, by the founders and the leaders of the team about the importance of meaningful choice, 
preserving character investment, and how these things led to the game not being all friendly. Now, I understand him saying that, and I'm hoping that... I'm hoping it just came out that way, but that it wasn't super considered. Because I would say that when a lesson is learned, it has to be codified into an underlying principle. You can't just blindly go around applying old lessons when the context of that past action is no longer relevant. I would say that the principle behind meaningful choice, essentially, is that player investment in the world should matter, right? That what the player earns, what they choose to do, you know, like the way they define their character, the way they interact with the world, that those things really matter. Now, if you apply that principle to the overarching design of WoW in 2006, you get one thing, and it will feel decidedly old school now. If you apply that to modern World of Warcraft, you will get another thing, because there's other modes of play. It's a more broad overall experience. So the same, more direct actions in the past won't really work in the present, because the game is literally played differently. So a designer has got to be able to understand why things worked in the past, why that was good in the past, why the same thing won't work now, but how the same principle could be applied now in a slightly different way. Thinking classic respec costs provided friction and helped define player choice, and then applying it to a very, very different game to WoW Classic, well, that's not a case of learning bad lessons from predecessors. That is just applying old techniques out of context. So there's that. Now, Ian also did admit that there is some stubbornness, but that clinging to those old lessons, some things are basically hard to let go when you've essentially been forged that way by being in the WoW team. That's pretty much a paraphrase of what he said. Fair play. And honestly, seeing the game director admit that a bit of stubbornness went on, that is a breath of fresh air. Because stubbornness is what was going on. That is what, if you <laughs> if you were to peel open the DMs between many content creators, that's a word that would come up, I'll just say that much. We pretty much all thought it. And there was a lot of frustration. Because you know, we obviously do vent to each other, right? Because we're all humans at the end of the day. Um, there was a lot of frustration there. There's a lot of frustration in the players. Now it is good to see that that thing we were frustrated about has actually been acknowledged as a fault in their thinking by the team. I think that's a very, very positive step. And it's the sort of thing that, you know, we don't rally behind the stubbornness, we rally behind a new direction and the positivity that can come with that. So fair play. All that I would say is that it must absolutely be framed as a failure of the current team. A failure of understanding what they were actually doing, the game they were actually making, uh, both the actions they were taking and the context of the game which those actions were applied to. Because some of Ian's wording could feel a little close to passing the buck to people who are no longer on the team. So I'm very much thinking that's just some unfortunate wording and that what Ian really was saying all along is more along the lines of, we learned a bunch of our lessons from our predecessors, we stuck to them as if they were gospel, but actually the context changed and we were a bit slow to adapt and now we understand. That's what I think Ian overall thinks. And if that's what he really does think, then I 1000% agree, and I'm thrilled that he is willing to talk about such things in public. I think that's very positive. At the very least, he admitted to stubbornness, as I said, and that is good. That's just not how the WoW team usually talks. There is a lot more humble pie being eaten, and that is good, because humility is a virtue. For the future, he said there was going to be more alt accessibility, more sensitivity and respect for players' time, and that they're trying to look at what sorts of activities in the game will be interesting only once or twice, but less when you have to do them again and again and again. Good. This is all good. I mean, think about the FF14 MSQ, right? The MSQ is mandatory, but you only have to do it once. And that basically means they can throw the kitchen sink into the damn thing, not having to worry about, oh, well, what if Jimmy's doing this three times in a row? He'll hate the game. The MSQ, it's like, hey, here's our big story. You only have to do it once. And because it's a thing you do once, we're just going to put everything into it. Make it awesome. Make it really long. Make it have all the cutscenes. We're going to chew the fat. 
And that has meant that it's very limited in scope, it knows what it has to do in the game, and it can be designed appropriately. Whereas in World of Warcraft, it can just be a little bit more odd. Another thing for FF14, every job, and if you're not aware, a job is basically their name for a class, every job can be played on the same character. So your one character finishes the MSQ, and then, you know, you can just do whatever job you want at any time. And that's really good. That basically means that FF14 is extremely alt-friendly, at least from the gameplay-oriented conception that is basically how we think about alt-friendliness within World of Warcraft. When it comes to respecting uh, the time, I mean, I do have lingering questions for the team. I would say, right team, conduits, why can they not directly be selected for upgrades? Like, until that is a thing, I can guarantee you I will never care about conduits or want to put my time into that. Because whenever I invest time in the game, in World of Warcraft, in my character, I want my character to be able to grow and for me to have things that actually stand to my character for a while. And having a random chance of getting a conduit be upgraded now, that's probably not the one that I want, that does not mesh with that. I also want to know why the new Valor Point heirloom gear is a random slot token, which I think is really a bit absurd, considering the VP is a seasonally capped currency. So a few little questions. But essentially then, Ian said that patch 9.1.5 is the team fanning out, and almost in a hackathon style, working on quick design fixes. It's a lot more bottom-up than top-down. They've acknowledged their communications issues, they've acknowledged their slowness to take on feedback. All good things that beg one question, what of the future? All of that stuff that Ian talked about, the alt-friendliness, respect for players' time, thinking about one-off content versus repeatable loop content, and the lessons of patch 9.1.5, those are impacting 9.2. Ian said as much. And not just 9.2, also the expansions to follow. <laughs> These are good things to hear. We'll have to hold them to it, we'll have to see what they actually do, because yes, too often they have kind of appeared to BlizzCon, done the whole, we're sorry, and then just kind of leapt straight back into the same old mistakes. The BFA to Shadowlands transition is basically that in a nutshell. But I do have to wonder though, if just the sheer scale of the recent uh, failure or whatever has forced some change. I mean, think about Shadowlands. Most of their ideas have failed. Power progression being tied to Torghast has failed. Covenant Lock, that has failed. Conduits, those have failed. Conduit Energy, that has failed. AoE Cap, that has failed. Domination Shards, those have failed. And when you go into aspects like the lore and the narrative, a lot of people would say those things have failed. When you go into the Renown system, a lot of people are also not particularly thrilled about that. I would go as far to say that Corthia basically failed. I think that such a broad misjudging of their product, um, and I should tell you, very much against some voices in the room in those meetings, from what I understand, uh, that is bound to have just driven all of this home and really made it feel important to address these issues. So according to Ian, we are going to hear about patch 9.2 soon. He did say they would have more planned after that. Now, whether that means an X expansion or a 9.2.5 or a 9.3, very hard to know. Apparently, though, we'll have a lot more details on the future soon. But the way that Ian said that is that we'll have more future details, but he wants those details to be explained with the full context of what 9.2 is going to be. So does that mean a general State of World of Warcraft presentation? I mean, if so, that would be a fascinating thing. Maybe they're going to announce 9.2, and then after that basically say, okay, so you know what's next for the game in terms of big content, now we're all going to sit down and we're going to talk, about overall the direction of World of Warcraft and where we're headed. I think that would be fantastic because it's definitely better now. A few days ago, like before all of these announcements, I think faith in the game and some faith in the team has really been at an all-time low. I think that for faith to be restored, people are going to need an immediate plan of action, so a 9.2 that looks really good, as well as a broad update on the team's strategy and what we can expect in the future. So, a 9-2 reveal, followed up by an honest appraisal of Shadowlands so far, and any details of the WoW plan going forward? I mean, that's pretty much the perfect way to meet the community's fears. 
pretty good they seem to be doing that then. And when he said, we do have more planned after that, uh, in the context of 9-2, it really does make you wonder if there's going to be a 9-2-5 or a 9-3. I mean, we can't really say much about that now, other than me basically musing about their pipeline. I mean, if patch 9.2 is going to be late Feb, perhaps March, nine months after that, and it's Q4 2022. Of course, based on the usual two-year cycle, that is when you would expect 10 to happen. Now, if there's going to be a 9.25 or a 9.3, it would be pretty hard to see a, a new expansion come out next year. So, is Shadowlands going to last into 2023? I do have to wonder. I mean, even if they can salvage the game, I think, frankly, the setting of the Shadowlands is a bit of a wash. Um, I think it could have been great, but I do think they bungled most of their core stories, and that's just an issue. Um, but that said, a 9.2 that truly is awesome, I mean, that could do a lot of work. So recently, I did a proposal video for patch 9.2, and before that, I did a proposal video for a new version of the class order hall system. And what guided me in creating those videos was this yearning for Azeroth that I feel myself and also in the people who watch this channel. For just the core fantasy. I'm not against cosmic, by the way. I love the science fiction genre. Actually, I'm probably more of a sci-fi person than a fantasy person, to be honest. Uh, I mean, crystal spaceships, awesome. What I am generally a bit more against, though, is a fantasy setting having quasi-scientific lore. It's the weird feeling we've got recently. Well, there's some good news here. VentureBeat actually picked up on players not being, in many cases, massive fans of the current story direction. They asked Ian about it, and Ian said that it is feedback they've heard. He said that some people like the escalation. They want to, you know, do, oh, the Titans, cool. Oh, the old gods, cool. What next? What's after that? Let's do the cosmos. He said that. But he said that while we cannot return to being simple adventurers in the forest, and yeah, that's true, uh, he said that Azeroth is the heart of the lore, and that they want to get back to that. Ian said that they're thinking about this sort of thing when it comes to planning expansions, and he sort of toyed or played with the idea in the interview of perhaps alternating between more traditional and terrestrial, and then more high concept. Honestly, I just love seeing this fear that people have be acknowledged. Because sure, BFA was on Azeroth, but so much of its lore spoke to these greater cosmic forces. So much so that the potentially cool faction story was drowned out by that. And, I mean, Legion had a bunch of cosmic that I enjoyed a lot, but then the BFA cosmic wasn't as good and we started to get a bit tired of it. And then Shadowlands continued not really having great cosmic stories. And we got even more tired of it, so I mean, no wonder there is a fatigue. Look, if they have a bang in patch 9.2, and then a grounded 10.0 that refocuses in core fantasy, that would be brilliant. Look, uh, Night Warrior Elune lore? That just won't hit strong when players don't feel like Blizzard have properly dealt with the real implications of Teldrassil. And they haven't, by the way. That's just an example, and I think it's the sort of thing that is super important when it comes to being, well, the steward of a virtual world. Next, then the Community Council. Right, the Community Council. Honestly, this is just a fantastic thing. It seems like it's about 100 players, Blizzard have opened applications, and uh, yeah, it's a, a public forum with developers and community people. And the idea that Blizzard has is that basically design stuff can be talked about there in a way that is public and in a way that basically just allows for that discussion to, to play out. Because one of the things we don't get right now is that discussion. We get things that appear in the PTR. Blizzard don't really do a great job of explaining things. Like, they'll do good patch notes and developer insights, but then we'll just see a lingering question like, uh, oh, you know, maybe in 9.1, why are the Corthian arguments done like that? Why are the conduit things done like that? All those questions that community members would have that Blizzard would just stay quiet on for like two months. Well, if there is a way for a person in the community council to be like, hello there, developer. This is my question. Based on the thing in the PTR and the data mining, could you explain? Well, this provides a way for a developer in the official capacity of their salaried job to do a direct communication on that. And it's likely all really where they don't need to go through the community management team, they don't need to go through PR, it's just a forum they have access to. If this is set up well, I think this could be a fantastic thing. It could head off a lot of community concerns, it could allow for a lot more discussion, and 
frankly, if the developers have got to do a whole bunch of, you know, thinking out loud in public, which, by the way, is a more brave thing to do, and we should be respectful of that, and, and you know, not go in for the kill all the time, um, but if they're willing to, you know, to do that, I mean, surely that will help sharpen their thinking. Surely that will mean that there is more of a feeling of a broader community when it comes to design decisions being made. Now, I will say, I initially did not plan to, um, you know, to, to do a submission for this. Um, yeah, I, really, I initially didn't plan for it, but uh, I got a few emails, a bunch of people hit me up on Twitter, so um, I, I did put an application um, in for it. I would be kind of surprised if I, if I got in it, to be honest with you. I don't really mind either way. Um, I mean, you know, I'm going to do videos, but oftentimes, I suppose there are times where I have thoughts about World of Warcraft that won't really fit into a video. Um, and especially as time goes on, you know, I want us to be so much less on the news cycle. What I enjoy, and you'll notice it in the channel recently, I enjoy us making lore videos and just those things that are, are a little bit more satisfying, you know? And um, that's where I want us to be. So if that's really a lot of what we're doing with the channel content, I mean, I should have a, a good bit more room to provide feedback and things like that. So look, on the application, I basically just said that for me, you know, my, my main goal in the game is I want to get ahead of the curve with my guild. Um, I talked about how I'm very much a player who enjoys playing in a guild, that I think it's important that we try to get more people into playing in a guild, at least in the end game pillars context of the game, because I think uh, basically there's a lot more subscriber stickiness when people are playing with friends, and I think it is a better gameplay experience. I talked a bit about that. I talked about how overall I'm a person who values the mastery loop um, and also who values basically unique experience. I talked about how I'm the sort of person where, you know, when I can kind of just see the big reward loop in front of me, see the Skinner box in front of me, the glass shatters. Um, and that's a part of the reason why I play games like Diablo 3, um, or Destiny 2 very much as a tourist because I think their mechanics and stuff is just so much fun, so cool. But the kind of like big grindy bit in an ARPG, I don't like. So my application, I talked a little bit about how that's the sort of player that, um, that I am and that um, I at least feel that I can provide opinions that should be a bit more uh, for the, the kind of average Joe player who is maybe not finding themselves loving the big beside the end game pillar progression focus of the current game. So basically, I want to I, I want a raid log and well, I want to log in for my raids and then in between that, I want to have lots of unique cool things to do like Suramar, like Deaths of Chromi, um I didn't mention it but you know, uh, a revamped time walking system just basically just try to like give an idea of what sort of profile of player um I would be. Very much not a mythic raider or anything like that, obviously. Um, I imagine they'll have no shortage of, uh, of the mythic community um, heading in there, though, to, to let Blizzard know what's up with the things that impact the mythic community. Um, for me, though, I thought it was just a bit more important for, uh, for the casual players, you know, for the people who really enjoy the transmogs, um, who enjoy the lore, the narrative, perhaps even some of the role players, um, that, you know, there's just a few more voices um, who are maybe backing them up. And whether I end up in this community council or not, certainly when it comes to the content on this channel from a design focus, that's very much the sort of player I do want to advocate for. I think WoW has a lot of content for the people who are, you know, sort of gotta go fast, you know, wanna really smash into a World of Warcraft season like it's a Path of Exile season. Um, there's plenty of people who wanna focus on that, so, um, you know, it's just a bit different to my focus. Overall, though, I think it's a fantastic initiative. I'm really happy they're doing it, and uh, I do wish them absolutely every success in the world for this, because at the end of the day, what do we all want? We want World of Warcraft to be in a better place. All right, that is it for me. Now, if you would like to start your own side hustle, get some cool thing off the ground, check out today's sponsor, Skillshare, and specifically Ali Abdal's class, because it's a pretty damn fantastic one. So click that link down below. Other than that, thank you for watching. Let me know what you think. I will see you next time.